want to talk about first? <laughs> this tree, actually. This tree is actually going to be um, a new logo for the UFC. Or, all from farm. I shouldn't say UFC all the time. People get confused, but it's way easier to say UFC than all from farm collaborative. Do you want to, uh, oh. What's up? Oh, no, you're fine. I was just going to say. Yeah, I was going to say you were sort of like in there. I know you wanted to be facing the thing, and it was still good at like an angle, but. Get in the tree. Yeah, man. If you kind of at like a 45 degree angle towards me, like that. <laughs> I'll get up so you don't see that. Um. trying to do a, we're trying to help places design with like some creative things. Um, there's gonna be some element of like design at the, like either coming to the bottom or like buildings coming out of the leaf or something like that. But we'll see. I'm messing around with it right now with Adobe. Um, so what's uh, when you say ultimate farm collaborative, what's that? So Ultimate Farm Collaborative is a corporation I started um, March 2019 and that was after I'd been here for like a couple months and um, I I had been in it long enough to kind of realize like there's some opportunities to bring some of the things back that I was used to from this farm back in the day, like, uh, but then also to bring some brand new ideas, and so ultimately, ultimately, Ultimate Farm Collaborative um, has been rebranding the farm, and myself as a person has been kind of um, on site doing my own branding on a different brand, but um, Ultimate Farm Collaborative is kind of restructuring the systems. Um, not restructuring, but like putting some systems in place that should lead to sustainable growth and development in a good way. Um, I, I know most people don't really care about your credentials. It kind of, it's just like white noise. But I did study entrepreneurship and sustainability. Um, so there's kind of just like created a company that incorporated everything I learned from college. Um, and this was like perfect place to apply that. Um, so it's just bringing in multiple strong um, hey, fellas. talent. How's it going? We're doing a little filming if you ever oh. you wanna. I got a wire. We just. Okay. Here. But yeah, it's just like bringing all the pieces, like di different pieces to this, to the place to test them out. Use a venue shop. Uh, okay. Those are the big ones. And then, uh, so I, I just, you know, it's, uh, people too. 
every person is every person is I don't know what the right word is. I, I use the term character a lot. Um, I don't mean that in a bad way at all. Just character. Like everyone like the builds are character. Every every person is character. Some characters can become big characters. Like if someone be, starts a business and becomes a business. And it's kind of a powerful thing. Um, so if we have multiple businesses all working together doing either coffee or music or farming and they can make money together and like help each other out and support each other that creates a more sustainable place uh, especially if people trust each other and like are actually working together but um, getting people to do that for no reason can be hard um, so uh, we're working on it but it's got a lot of potential for people that want to kind of become part of a team, but also have a place of their own to kind of work out their imagination or get your hands dirty or whatever you see in this place. Um, and then also for just like mainstream, you come for a concert or get a cup of coffee and come check this place out. Um, yeah, so pretty much what all the fun clever is doing. It's a lot of um, design and different different industries of design. It's still kind of making its way, but eventually the long-term goal for all the fun clever is architectural design. Um, kind of creative in architectural design. Um, but right now it's doing a lot of the web web design and then kind of designing like, the music venue and stuff like that. But, yeah. Tell me about um, a year ago when you were when you came to this spot and you were just kind of dreaming up some of these ideas. What you were sort of telling me before. And you don't have to look at the cameras. You can, you can either talk like look at me or just like look off or however you want. But I think we should probably establish if we're looking at cameras or not. And I don't know if you have an opinion about that. If you want to be looking at camera, that's more like you're talking to the people. Whereas in a documentary, generally, you're kind of pretending the cameras aren't there a little bit for like the verite type type stuff. But even like in the office, like they'll look at the cameras. In the office, they do do that, yeah. But that's a comedy show, so that's that's sort of like creating kind of a like a mockumentary type feel. And if we, but it can, you know, we did talk about that, and we could go in that direction if we want people to mostly talk to the camera. We can do that. It's just kind of setting up an establishment of that. I think if people become like into it and they like kind of like 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 it. If what we do starts creating exponential growth, like, growth, like if, if people start liking any of what we're producing, and uh -huh. say these farmers like see a benefit of like, yeah, we should kind of share like what we're doing. Like maybe they'll kind of like, get more personal and like, talk right at the camera or something like that. But, yeah. Um, uh, I haven't been on camera even that much, so. I'm still gonna get kind of used to it. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's that's what it's gonna be like, and it's but it's good to have you do it so you know how it feels yeah. for the other people. Um, but we should, if we, you want to establish that, so you're talking to the camera. I think that's great if you want to do it like that. Aesthetically, I kind of prefer not looking at the camera, but for this, you know. If, we're, if we are thinking about like like yeah, the office yeah. type feel, then it's like looking at the camera is good. Yeah. Um. And we could do it right now and just see how it feels. And, you know, we can always change your mind later.
Yeah. Um. Yeah, I really haven't decided what. Because I think it could be educational and. Well, I think that that's that's what it should be, probably. Like it should be both of those things. Like you, you come there for something that's entertaining, and you get educated. I feel like it's probably gonna, or you're trying to get educated by something, and then you accidentally get entertained too. Mm -hmm. You know, or that's how you're gonna keep people wanting to come back. Is if you have like a good combo, playing the line of both of those things. And the only advertisement piece. Kind of like last week, and I'm talking about stuff that we're probably never used, but um, I think the advertisement piece could probably be more geared towards like, the food that we have. Um, yeah. That'd be more. Because those are the three education, food, entertainment. Kind of three big things that we're trying to provide. What? Okay. Uh, why, don't you, why don't you riff on that a little bit? On education, food, and yeah. Um, we, those are just things that we think that everyone likes or at least appreciates. So those are the three. I mean, it's a place that's set up pretty well to grow food, distribute food. Um, growing it, it's a lot of work, but um, we're trying to get that going and then um, the ed education piece is coming it's in the works but just like it's good for both teachers and the kids learning I think to just have a diverse kind of community of older people younger people and they can learn from each other honestly a lot and like it kind of always comes around food like we can have good experiences, grow food, eat food together, and that's kind of cool. And then the entertainment piece is, like, that's entertaining in itself, but, like, next level entertainment, like, where you come in, it's kind of like a place, like a destination, like, um, to see, just to see it, like, art, things growing, an active place, people are happy, and what, just a very upbeat place, it's kind of cool. Um, so, for a lot of good reasons. Tell tell me the story again about when you when you thought of that as a, a DJ booth and oh, yeah. you you came here you sat down and you were just thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I would like kind of just chill here in the mornings um, and that office wasn't being used at all, so I was kind of just like, well, I'm a DJ, I could have a small concert or something, hey. do, do, do. Um, and just kind of try and get at least my friends and like my life connected to this place, it's, that was kind of my outlet, of, like, what do I do best, what would my friends show up for? I don't know, you'd be like, hey, if you want to go to the farm, people are like, what are you going to do at the farm? But it's like something that they can relate to. Like, hey, you want to go to a concert? It's like, yeah, I want to go to a concert. And then they get introduced to the farm, they're like, that place is sick. I want to, like, then they know. But it's kind of just like a, you know, it's a passion, I guess, is the short answer. It's, it's something that excites me, which makes it easier for me to be motivated to keep working and, like, When you can find that, you can get into like a rhythm of just like when you're working towards a concert or working towards something that you're just like crazy excited about. Um, it feels like everything just becomes a lot easier and you can get more done in a day than you have in a year just because you're doing something you're passionate about. You know, like, boom, you just made a music festival or you just, um, you just grind it and just like follow through. I think a lot of things you got this stick with it when it gets hard. Um, I'm getting all motivational now. I'm not a motivational speaker. But, um, yeah. Yeah, that, it might, it might one day. 
it's kind of an interesting spot, but um, where, where we are right now is where the first stage was. And then we've got the stage back there for kind of, that's where the artists that are performing wanted it. Um, so we kind of let the arts pick actually where the stage goes. It's so easy to make that um, the last artist that was here, Traffic, um, he was, he said, you should just tell me about this, um, this bar that, I think it's like a, gosh, I'm playing out my name, and, but they, they'll put like a stage in the middle, and randomly in the middle of some place, and people are just like walking around the stage, and the DJ's playing or something like that. I don't even know if you know what I'm talking about, but you can kind of do that here. You can just like build something out of plants or wood or something cool, put the artist there and then just let people walk around. And artists are artists, they'll just kind of do their thing and we've had some fun Saturdays doing that. Tell me about your, uh, your history with this place when you were growing up. Yeah, so I can't remember the first time I came here, but I think it was like. 10, 10, 10 or 11, um, and I just remember like Silver Spring would be lined with cars, and they'd have a farmer's market outside, and they'd usually do tours, um, you come, you pay for a tour, and they take you on a tour, and they tell you a bunch of cool stuff about plants growing, and compost, and goats, bees, fish, and it. So as a little kid, like you come in, you see that place, you're like, oh, that's a cool place. Um, and and I grew up in Milwaukee. I always knew about Grand Tower. And then, um, I've been connected with Will because back in the day, um, they were gonna do a fish farm, and then a bunch of fish died. <laughs> It wasn't very profitable, but my dad and Will have been business, have been in business here for a while, um, trying this urban egg thing, trying to figure it out. And so I went to school, and I was kind of on the back of my mind, and I ended up studying like um, for it. And then when growing power went under, um, they they had like I wasn't at the meeting, but they they had a meeting of people that were very passionate about Grand Bar that really liked what they was doing. Um, and they all got together and like, what do we do? Like, do we bring it back? Do we, um, do we raise money to bring it back? Or like, what, what are we supposed to do about this? And um, Tom ended up buying it. Uh, Tom's my dad. Um, so then I wasn't around at the time. I was out west. But um, ended up coming back home. and. My dad had a farm, so I and I got involved. I didn't get involved right away. I was um, I still wanted to come and travel. I still do travel a lot, but um, slowly got involved, and now now I started a company to kind of just help the place wherever I can. Um, but yeah, I, I've been around this place for quite some time, probably. 10, 10, 14 years, around there. Um, not like heavily involved, just around. I knew about it and I've been here like multiple times, but I didn't necessarily like volunteer for summer or anything like that. Um, I guess I did actually. I worked at the farm. Um, I used to cut wheels long. <laughs> what did you think of him when you were growing up? I was a dope dude. Um, yeah, it was fun cutting his lawn because he had strawberries. I picked strawberries and cut his lawn. Where, where, where is that? Like, what neighborhood is that? I won't drop his address, but. Oh, no. What? Oak Creek. Oak Creek. Um, so, yeah, I mean. It's pretty far from here. What's that? It's pretty far from here. A little bit. But, yeah, I mean, so I guess I've been friends with this place with Will for a while. Um, 
be cool to see it come back. I guess it's kind of mine. What do you think it'll mean to people? Like, or what? What was that like when when it closed? I know you were probably at school when that happened, right? Or um, were you yeah. back? I was. I was still in school, so when it closed, I wasn't around. Um, and then that whole following year, I wasn't around. Um, I got. I came back the winter of 2018, so it was a full year after it was. But from we've had past employees come and share stories with us, and we've had um, people who used to come here all the time would like show up and they'd ask questions and kind of tell us about what was going on. Um, and from what we've heard, a lot of people were sad that it was gone, and a lot of people were kind of they, they understood, but they were kind of sad. Um, and so a lot of people have kind of said, uh, oh, here's that seed. help out wherever we want, we can help I'll out. I'll take it. Um, but I didn't really get a good feel for the exact, like, whole year right after I was around. But um, it's been good now, though. It's like, um, what do you think it's going to mean for the community for this to be sort of up and running again? No idea. I won't speak for everyone else. Yeah. I'll let them talk. Okay. Um, not to mention, like, um, I actually don't get too crazy about this, but it's not necessarily, um, like, I didn't grow up. I, I grew up in Milwaukee, so I, I, I grew up in New Berlin, but not Milwaukee, but, um, I don't know, I think it'll mean a lot for the world if this was um, because it was on a trajectory to, it was on a, it was ahead of everything, it was ahead of everything, um, it's kind of, I don't know, it was, it was doing sustainable things before even anyone was on that radar. Like it was, it was, um, and a lot of people get confused with sustainability. I think they're like, well, we gotta stop doing things, we gotta stop CO2 emissions, we gotta drive electric cars, we gotta buy renewable energy. A lot of the things that they were doing here they were sustainable, but they were also very just common sense, not, not common sense, but like practical. And like just use Cut. Mm -hmm. Cut. Hey. How's it going? We gotta edit all this so we can cut. Yeah. I'm gonna give you this before I lose it. I feel cool. then, uh, whatever they're saying. Uh, yes, some question. Do you uh, plan to be involved in a site I just put big growth and a half acres off site? In the past, what role have you played on teams that work with, as a family unit? Uh, what excites you about the project? They just grow to, for themselves, language is a barrier for them, or a problem for them. How creative are you? What did you like? And my glasses. To do for leisure. But they are very, very creative. They farm. That's their leisure. <laughs> and the rest of NA, NA, uh, they live on the north side. Cool. And that's their address and whatever. Cool. So they're elderly uh, mom folks with a lot of skills, you can see. They can grow in little tiny cubicles. Each one of those trays hold like 200 plants. Yeah, they're, they, they've got probably two, 3,000 plants in here. Way more than that. Really? Try about 10 them. <laughs> Seriously. They've got so many plants, it's ridiculous. And they take a little stick, and all they do is take a little tiny, that doesn't hurt the beast. 
Now they know they've been doing this for us. Then they take lightness. They take a little uh, hand pump, water pump, and water in that way. Then they'll take a little sifter. You know, like a Put sifter. The top on top? Yeah, a sifter, not one of our screeners. Right. And, uh, kitchen sifter and sift the soil so it sprinkles. Just watch them right I know. I, I have been watching them. They've, just from two or three days watching them, I've learned a lot. Yeah. But you don't want to try to do it. Because you got to have tremendous patience. I wouldn't ever plant like that. <laughs> Never. <laughs> you know. But that's part of their culture, the way they do it. Because if you can imagine, if they're in Laos, there's not a whole lot to do in the mountains. Grow food for yourself, be self-sufficient, and small little, they can take this little area right here and just grow a tremendous amount of crops. So in three and a half acres, they can grow more than most people can on 10, 12 acres. Keep them around? Huh? Keep them around? Well, I'm just saying yeah. that that's their thing. So this is a great opportunity for them to get their starts going. Yeah. So they're very thankful. That you let him, you met him, and you said you can use this space. Yeah. Do you have um, any of their information that we could get an interview from, from one of them? No, you can't. Use them. Can't interview them. No. They're real funny about. It. They are. Taking pictures of. Uh, really. I asked them. I took pictures yesterday. Yeah. But I. Maybe I, there's I, one. I maybe there'll be one that's just the, like a little outgoing and we're going to. I got the community started in farming in, in Milwaukee years ago. Mm -hmm. Because back in the day, there were no, nothing but white farmers at Pondy Farmers Market except for me. I had a hard time getting in there. There's a lot of discrimination. They didn't want people of color. Or wow. There's all these farmers markets. Pondy were just white farmers at one point. We're talking 25, more than 25 years ago, uh, 35 years ago. Now, the majority of farmers in all of the markets are mock. So they moved from Fresno to Minnesota, came down from Minnesota and spread out across. The majority of them came into Milwaukee. But they couldn't get into the farmers markets. We were the first ones. I was the president of the farmers that ran that Pondy Farmers Market. Mm -hmm. And I brought them in. And they were scared as hell because they had been treated so bad. Wow. And uh, from, from there, they even got challenged. When they went to the West Dallas market, the farmer that was farming next to me in Oak Creek, he had a farm in Oak Creek, they went out, they didn't believe he was growing all this beautiful big peppers and things. So the manager of the West Dallas market went out to uh, find out if they were really growing and not buying this produce to sell, resell. And then he had to go back, because the farmers complained. He had to go back and tell all the white farmers, yeah, they're growing their stuff. They just grow it better than you guys. <laughs> funny as hell. Wow. And they did the same thing to me when I first started. Wow. He said I wasn't growing my stuff. I was not farming. I've heard that multiple times come out of your mouth. Huh? <laughs> I said I've heard that multiple times come out of your mouth. Yeah. Because uh, they didn't realize that once in America, 30% of the farmers in America were affected in America. Back in the 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. And probably the most significant farmer of all time was uh, George Washington. All the modern day equipment that farmers use, he invented. A lot of people don't know who did. Hmm. He invented everything. George Washington Carver? George Washington Carver. All the uh, cultivating equipment, everything that you see on these massive tractors, he invented that. Him and Henry Ford were good friends. You know, I, I, a lot of people don't know that. You have to go to Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan, and the history is there. Hmm. As a matter of fact, when George Washington Carver got really old, Henry Ford went down and built him uh, one of those things that take you up and down the stairs. You know, let that built for him. They were very good friends. And uh, 
Yeah, I mean, Henry Ford, the first, a lot of people don't know this, they think he, Model T, that wasn't the first thing, the tractors were, he invented the tractor hmm. before cars. You know, <clears throat> what else can I tell you? Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody associates uh, George Washington Carver with all these Kia stuff, products and stuff. That's all we read in the history books, but that's not the true history. The true history was that he was a farmer. Him and Booker, he went to Tuskegee, and there was a clash in the, in the black community between him and Booker T. Uh, Washington, who was the president of Tuskegee. Tuskegee. Booker T wanted all Negroes, that's what we were called at that time, to get educated and get away from farming. Whereas George Washington Carver said, we need to continue to grow food because you know, you're going to survive if you grow food. Now look what's happening today. When you really think about today, why are people going through that line? And why are people struggling for food? why poverty is so great because people can't secure the basic thing that we need. It's going to get worse. Which is food, right? It's going to get worse in the next month. Yeah, you know what? What's going to happen? Trump's going to let people out and back in society. We're going to get a second wave of this. Mm -hmm. Coronavirus is coming back. It's stronger than ever. Watch, mark my words, I said that. The, um because he's already saying, what did he say? You guys been listening? Let's hear it. It's a battle between the Got folks me. that are doctors that say, no, let's keep people locked down. And Trump keeps saying, we need to get, this, get the economy going because he's going to lose the election. If the economy is bad in six months, what's going to happen? If the, they, if the economy is bad, people don't usually read. They don't switch. They are switching. He's he's twelve points politics. behind. He's twelve points behind Biden right now. His whole thing. I don't follow them. See, you, you got. I got to get you reading the paper. I'll talk politics with you. We can talk all day long. <laughs> I'm seeing the podcast right here. This is you uh, you two talking. Well, it's, you uh, don't know now. Pretty funny. You know? <laughs> yeah. well, Every time we have a conversation, so I didn't know that. Because the. the Tyler doesn't, doesn't watch TV, right? The, I don't. One of the best points you made, though, is not, none of the politicians are talking about food. No, they never have. And this election, they probably should, because if, got, if one candidate just said, grow food in your backyard. They got to talk about inequities of communities. They got to talk about food. Yeah. The poverty is leading us to this. All these people, you don't want people in the country dying and say, hey, the majority of people are dying from this in the black community that's poor. That's like the worst thing as a politician you want on your resume, right? That's the worst thing. And Trump is like, oh, I don't care. Oh, I don't care. I got attitude. I don't care. Because they're going to the store every day. It's their fault. It's the Democrats' fault. That's why it's happening. It's Obama's fault. It's the Chinese fault. That's all he does, is try to deflect. He's been in office three years. The More stockpile, almost four, the stockpile of everything, he said, was depleted when he took over. Not true. He'd sell so many lives, it's ridiculous. He had three years to build those stockpiles up of masks, on ventilators of everything. As a president, you're supposed to be on top of that stuff. He fired all of the people that worked on that kind of stuff. Every one of them he fired. So how are you going to have an infrastructure of, for emergencies if you fired everybody? Read about it. I will. Read about the, it. The thing, though, with the four communities is because they have to go to the store again. So they're, they're, exactly. they're more exposed. I went down the street. Uh, we can go down the street right now. Walmart parking lot is full. Yeah. You're in a, a, a 200,000 square foot box. And you got all those people breathing all over the place. Right? It's simple. I mean, it's, it's common sense. If you got 200,000 square foot building, 
in Walmart is saying, come on in, come on in, we don't care. Meanwhile, you go down in the Whitefish Bay to Trader Joe's, now they let... 10 people in our time, something like that? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Are they? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. Fishing? Yeah, yeah. If somebody leaves, another person can go in. But you go this, in... This thing out here is actually not a bad idea. Just drive up, pop your top, No, it's a great a, idea. Put groceries in. It's a great idea, but the problem is the quality of the food. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the quality Because, of... I'm going to tell you what happened. Your dad don't want to hear this. Don't put this on the 